Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, a hard drive failure with a name and a face. And today it is time for episode 30 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off, and I'm going to be pretty confused throughout this episode because this is actually the second attempt I have made to record it. <laughs> I last tried to record this episode something like two weeks ago, uh, immediately before falling, thoroughly ill, as is my want and happens periodically. But uh, yeah, so I don't remember what I was doing. I had the heartbreaking experience of recording a pretty good episode, pressing the stop recording button and seeing a pop-up say, you've started recording. So yes, let's put that terrible experience behind us and just continue with the various terrible further future experiences that are left to befall the various characters of Paradise Killer. So we went through all of the case files last time. This time we're going to hang out and do demonology. What was Monster Rat's plan with regards to demons? Millennia ago, he would never have gone along with Carmelina's plan. He changed. He wanted control. All rulers do. The Syndicate wasn't reviving gods fast enough. We were struggling with the demons, a continual thorn in our sides. Carmelina's plan to block demonic corruption is flawed. The demons would be repelled from island structures, but would still possess our cattle. They will scapegoat the citizens. He could come down fiercer on them. A nice move for an aspiring despot. That isn't the Montserrat I remember. Immortality is not a good thing. It warps the mind. He's followed in the footsteps of Ezekiel. They went too far. The new island is born and you'll have to deal with it. I love having something to look forward to. How has Carmelina demon-proofed the island? Demons and gods are just alien beings from different worlds. They enter our world through psychic pathways that bridge huge distances in the universe. Travelling along a pathway breaks down the demon's form. Their psychic image crosses space and gathers as solid matter when they arrive on the island. The marshals hunt those demons down and exterminate them. Soldiers have their uses after all. When demons don't manage to fully assume corporeal form, they soak into the physical structure of the island. And the island becomes corrupted. The rot sets in and the island must end. Carmelina and Mashahiro Heavy Industries developed a new technique that repels this corruption. Their plan is to charge the particles in our air, stopping demons from being able to latch on to the physicality of the island. The very concrete will repel them. Does that mean Perfect 25 will be full with demons floating around in the air? That's the dirty secret. Demons will still come to the island. They need somewhere to go. Next best thing to island structure are the minds of citizens. Perfect 25 will be a hotbed of demon possession. Human minds are malleable and porous. Unlike concrete, we have a certain amount of latent psychic ability. The structure of the island will be safe and permanent, but the citizens are the sacrifice made to the pursuit of perfection. The marshals will be busy. And so will you if you get to reform the Paradise Psycho Unit. That's not my priority. It will be. There's a point there, which is that... I mean, how is that different to how it is already? The citizens are already sacrificed solely for the benefit of the island, after not having chosen to be here. What difference does it make whether they're just constantly open to demonic possession, or whether they are slaves forced to work in a factory and then eventually slaughtered? How is a god's deception different to the illegal communication that allows demons onto the island? Do you believe a human has the same ability to speak across the vast and infinite cosmos as a god? We are amateurs at opening the psychic pathways. The pathways are weak and easy to breach. The gods can speak across the universe without attracting baying demonic hordes. The victims' dreams are filled with visions of the gods. They become the gods' thrall, executing their will for promises of power. The victim doesn't realise it's happened. It's subtle, insidious. That's how it was with me. The Syndicate hasn't worked out how to deal with god deception yet. The actions you take at the behest of a god are criminal, but you're a victim of the god. I hope that answered your question. It did, thank you. That does actually answer a question I have had for a while, namely, what is the difference between a demon and a god? 
As far as I can tell, the gods are just very, very powerful psychics elsewhere in the universe. Demons are extra-dimensional weirdos, I guess? They're both phenomena of psychic powers, but gods are, like, corporeally bound to some extent. Got time to chat? I have all the time in the world, until the island ends. I want to ask you about being deceived by a god. You're the expert in that, aren't you, investigator? Ooh, Catty! You are our exorcist. You're the expert in all things astral. I want to know how it happens. The victim catches the attention of a god. The god begins to speak to them in their dreams. Why do you think you caught the attention of a god? I was the head of the Paradise Psycho Unit. A perfect target for the machinations of a god looking for power. Damned Harmony saw an opportunity with you. The key that would unlock the Syndicate. You wanted to kill us all and feed off the released psychic energy. The Immortal Syndicate have a lot of energy to give off. You might have resurrected. I almost let it happen. Ah, don't swim in the Sea of Guilt, Investigator. Deception is subtle and insidious. You were a victim, criminalised by the narrow minds of others. You showed them their own weakness and they were frightened. Stay out of the shadow of your past, Investigator. May you always live in the shadow. And may you reach the moon. Spooky. Spooky, weird and interesting. Did I use this previously? Yes, I did. So, uh, yeah. I think next up, I was gonna go and check phone records. That's what I was gonna do, but I wanna see what this thing is first. I might have checked this already. As I say, it's been a couple weeks since I last recorded an episode, thanks to my relentlessly failing ill health and also my inability to press record at the start of recording sometimes. This looks weak. I could probably smash it with something. Cool. <clears throat> it's always nice to resort to physical violence where all else fails. Uh, something that I imagine Lady Love Dies is intimately familiar with as an extra dimensional terror dimension cop. Right, let's see. That over there is where we need to go to get the phone records. But I notice there is also a Shinji up there on top of the the wibbly spinny what do you call it? The reality folding drive. So I'm gonna go check that out. I think I might also just make sure I haven't missed anything over here. There's one Shinji and a couple items down there, and I think Oh, it looks like I've found everything else in this entire zone. I have been resolutely thorough. <sighs> Ah, oh, whiskey. The Way of Blood Bar. 25th Island Sequence. Do you have any secrets? I tried it once and I didn't like it. Why not? The dark spiral in my stomach when someone got close to the secret. That's part of having a secret. It proves it's worth keeping. It put me off my food. I, I hope we find out at some point who these two are. Seven Spies Whiskey. Named after a group of martial spies that attempted to infiltrate a hidden ziggurat in Africa. They never came back. Bad for them. Good for me, I guess. Where was the other one? Right below. Aha! Underneath? Oh, it's just a gem. A uh, crystal. Whatever they are. A little bit disappointing. Because they're presumably they're presumably people who have uh What's the quickest way back up? Splish splash, there we go. They're presumably two members of the syndicate who have left already, which means that they might be on our list of people. But as yet there's not really any clue about who they are. And if they are are we- is this a literal experience? Is, uh, is this information to which Lady Love Dies is privy? Does she get to know what we get to know about these two figures having their enigmatic conversations on the other side of Apocalypse? It is unclear 
Um, leaving that as an intentional ambiguity is a kind of a narrative sleight of hand that uh, I would not have suspected the writers of this game of being capable. Like, if it is intended to be ambiguous, I quite like that as an idea. But also, I wouldn't put it past them to have some dumb, you know, reference later on to how you can uh, get psychic visions of the future if you drink whiskey. I don't know. I mean, that just happens in real life if you drink enough of it. Do these days feel short to you? When the island ends, the flow of time gets weird. Technically, we're still on the last day of the island, so the crime still happened last night. Now I get it. Get what? Why you people are so messed up. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, it is kind of a fucked up way to be, really, isn't it? I am going to look around the back of this building. Because my... You know, my paranoid gamer fantasies. Somewhere, there has to be more secrets. And speaking of such secrets, here we have found one. This is another one of the glitched nebulas. C4. Tastes like a bang. That's not... No, that's not a that's not a thing. Nobody there's no soft drink slogan like that. Another one of these quarantined machines. The cosmos is infinite and empty. Thus says Dead and Nebula. What? On abandoned moons above terrifying planets our minds wander. Thus says Dead and Nebula. Connection to the net is all that anyone seeks. Protection from the dreadful loneliness of infinitely antique space. Thus says Dead and Nebula. Don't bother trying to escape from this machine. Intrusion attempt detected. Engaging all firewalls. Unauthorized intrusion halted. Intruder purged. Why would you turn away a soul desperate to escape the grim isolation of astral bodies? Thus says Dedda Nebula. Dedda Nebula? Intruder identity confirmed. Failed AI shard Dedda Nebula. Please open up the door to my home. Clawed beings born from dead stars haunt me. Thus says Dedda Nebula. Not going to happen. The universe is built on trades, a billion dead to satisfy the whims of ancient goats, thus says Dedda Nebula. What is it? I have a bargain written on an Onyxian tablet, audio derived from a dying imperial civilization, thus says Dedda Nebula. Starlight. Reverse intrusion success. Copying. Music file downloaded. Shutting down vending operations. The child of economy is trickery, the clawed beast's approach, thus says Dedda Nebula. Goodbye. <laughs> APOC B-Sides. Misunderstand. Rumours. Unrequited love. Jealousy. Revenge. Envy. Secrets. Regret. Anger. Emptiness. Sorrow. A single tear in a sea of stars. Huh. What a weird coincidence. That's actually my MK Ultra activation phrase. Uh, I'll be calling it cutting this episode short. I have to go assassinate several important political figures. I'm not actually sure what I should- oh wait, hang on, I know what I should do. <laughs> I was going to say I wasn't sure what I should uh, try and achieve next, now that I've done that, having forgotten why I came over here in the first place. Well, how do you like that? That's what we call a shortcut. So, let's, uh, let's crack it open. Let's have a quick mental s slam into the nightmare zone. Sure. This computer's attached to the comms tower. If I can crack the code, I'll be able to use the tower to verify any cell phone data I can find. That's got it. There's usually an interface at the top of the towers where I can verify cell phone data I've found. I'll be honest, these puzzles are utterly trivial. A puzzle that is completely trivial ceases to be a puzzle, it ceases to be a relevant part of the game world, it ceases to provide friction. Even though there was a meta comment from a character earlier about how it was important to, you know, provide friction because, you know... Well, I have a lot of re <laughs> I've talked over the years on my last plays about why friction is important to game design and why games that remove too much friction cease to have any kind of feeling of meaning or, or purpose or difficulty or any drive to complete them. Well. 
A puzzle needs to actually have some level of difficulty. This might as well have just given me a number and said input the number. Um, they are just a hassle. This tower can help me scan phone records. Scanning. I've got the record. A call was made by a Kiko to Witness. Witness was in his apartment. But it says Akiko was at the Syndicate HQ. That's weird. She told me she was at the Desolation Cell. She lied to me. There's an unknown number in here. It's not any Syndicate phone records. 8332112ES9116RD. It was dialed at midnight last night. The call picked up, but ended under a second. That might be innocuous, but it probably isn't, though. This tower can help me- oh wait, <laughs> yeah, she just repeats that. So that's interesting, that's a, that's finally a di direct connection between Witness and possibly Carmelina. Not, no, there's no connection for Carmelina there. Into this plot, which, I mean, at the moment I am still pretty sure that this is a, a big conspiracy involving everybody, although Aikiko seems up to her tits in it. Um, you know, we know that Witness doesn't have a direct connection to what's going on, except that the psychic death screams are involved, and he's the only person who can hear those, and also he has weird demon experimentation uh, connections going back a decade or more. So it's possible that he was part of this conspiracy for a long time, or that it involved obtaining from him something he created long ago. But that is a, finally a direct connection to him with regards to this conspiracy. Um, Carmelina's not, still not technically involved because the two of them were together, but he went out onto the balcony um, to take his phone calls, so, you know, he could very much, she could very much not be involved in that. Scanning. I've got the records. It looks like all the calls made to or by Yuri happened at the celebratory gardens. All the calls from last night are from Yuri to Lydia, all about the same length. These are him directing her to syndicate members for pickup. Please review the data between 2350 and 0000. There's a gap. The phone went dark for 10 minutes. Why? Unknown. This matches up with what Lydia told me. There's a gap in time where Yuri's phone couldn't be contacted and no one can account for him. This tower can help me scan- <laughs> why, does, why does she even say that if I don't have any more phone records? Interesting. I'm a bit disappointed I haven't managed to get a hold of anyone else's phone, but my next goal is going to have to be to go back around to everyone I've already talked to and talk to all of them again with the intent of shaking something loose with all of the additional information I've found. I don't think I'm going to find much more by, uh, you know, scrabbling around in the dirt for more secret secrets and more hidden things. I think I found pretty much all of the information I'm going to find by exploring. I'm pretty sure that the route this game intended me to take, or expected me to take, was much more focused on talking to people, going to a place, talking to a bunch of people, going to a place, not in my weird, I'm going to explore every single nook and cranny of each zone before I really talk to people method of exploration, so... Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of talking coming up I think however we have got a lot of leads and a lot of things to talk about with all of these terrible people in their self-absorbed petty little lives so um, I guess that's what we're gonna be doing for the next few episodes and I need to switch off my discord because the notifications are being sent to me even though I thought I muted them which is always infuriating for people when they watch my Let's Plays and or streams. Anyway, uh, you know what? That's going to be a little bit of a short episode for today. Join me next time. Uh, I have every excuse. You know, they stuck my head in a giant magnet the other day, which as um, an AI... Okay, well that's getting infuriating. I'm just going to end this episode now before we hear loads more message bloops. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it from me for today. I hope you join me again for a bit more of this game. We're en entering the home stretch now. I just need to interrogate everybody again, and then it will probably be time to finish up and call an end to it. Thank you so much for watching. That's it from me. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. 
You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.